I'm Soledad O'Brien. Welcome to Matter of Fact. Senate Republicans are giving it one last try. They're pinning their hopes for an Obamacare repeal on a bill introduced by Senators Lindsey Graham of South Carolina and Bill Cassidy of Louisiana. The Graham-Cassidy bill would keep much of the Obamacare tax structure in place, but instead of funding Medicaid and subsidies directly, the money would go to states as a block grant. That gives states the responsibility of designing their own health care systems. A few key points. The bill lets states opt out of many Obamacare regulations, allowing states to redefine essential benefits. The Medicaid expansion and subsidy funding would be cut, going to zero over the next decade. Funding to states is capped so it won't go up and down with the economy. Critics say the states that expanded Medicaid under Obamacare and added people to the insurance marketplace will be the hardest hit. Supporters say it will incentivize efficiencies at the state level. Sabrina Corlett is a research professor focusing on health insurance reforms at Georgetown University's Health Policy Institute. Welcome. It's nice to have you. Thank you. What does that mean, incentivize efficiencies? And is that, in fact, true? Well, the bottom line is they'll be cutting about $250 billion out of federal health care programs, particularly for low-income people. So efficiency basically means that the states will have to decide how deeply to cut and where. Donald Trump tweeted, I would not sign Graham Cassidy if it did not include coverage of pre-existing conditions. It does, exclamation point. A great bill, capital B, repeal and replace. Is that in fact true, that it does include covering of pre-existing conditions? Well, not really. So what the bill that would do is allow states to have insurance companies charge people more based on their, their health status. So if you had cancer or um, were having a baby, they could charge you any premium they wanted. And the truth is that if you have a pre-existing condition, likely you will not be able to find affordable coverage. Then you have um, uh, Senator Cassidy, and he said this in an interview, Graham Cassidy will insure more folks and we protect those with pre-existing conditions. Will Graham Cassidy, in fact, insure more people? It's just simple math. You can't cut $240 billion out of these federal programs, take money away from states that expanded Medicaid, um, expanded enrollment in these marketplaces, and cover more people. It, it's, it's just simple math. It's impossible. So while we don't have an official score from the nonpartisan budget office, I would say it's going to be anywhere from 20 to 30 million people who will lose coverage uh, under this bill. So here are some other specifics. Uh, the funding would come through block grants to states. So people who who are not critics of the bill would say, this is great news for the states. It actually empowers the states. The states get flexibility under this bill, but it's flexibility on what to cut. Um, and they're gonna have to make some really politically troubling decisions. When you think about it, two thirds of the Medicaid budget goes to care for the elderly and the disabled. Half of births in this country are paid for by the Medicaid program. When you're a state legislature, you have to decide, do I go after grandma? Do I go after the babies, disabled people? This is, this is, a, I, this is a lose lose for states. Money for Medicaid expansion will be zeroed out eventually in 2026, I think is the date. Right, this is essentially taking Obamacare's coverage expansion. And to be clear, we have 20 plus million people have gained coverage under the Affordable Care Act. It just reverts back to before the ACA was ever passed. It's, it eliminates all that coverage gain. Many um, elected officials know that cutting um, Medicaid and Medicare is the third rail of politics, right? They will, those words shall never come out of their mouths because they recognize, like, politically, it's very, very challenging. Are they lying if they say, we're not going to cut Medicaid? This is a massive cut to not just the Medicaid expansion, but to the core traditional program. Where do you think it goes? Well, I've been working in healthcare policy for 25 years, and I have never, ever seen anything like this um, where senators are, are rushing to vote on something they don't understand the implications of. Um, I think there's a decent chance it passes. Um, it seems that the Republican Party is under a lot of pressure to deliver for their base and their big donors um, that are demanding this, uh, and they're under a deadline. And uh, that sort of creates a perfect storm of pressure on these members.
Well, it'll be interesting to see what ends up happening. Sabrina Corlett, thanks for talking with us. And thank it's you always for walking us through the 101 of healthcare. Really appreciate it. I'm happy to do it.